Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about zero fourth members. As the name suggests, there are members that carry no load. But why do we want to use them? We use such members to increase the stability of trust during construction. If you are looking at this truss, when we are constructing, we cannot just put members B, C, C, D and D, E together without these supporting members. We are going to later on see that these members are going to be zero fourth members, but they are needed for the stability during construction. Also, the second reason is that there are zero fourth members under the current loading, but if the loading changes, then they are no longer zero fourth members and they would carry load. So we want to find a method to identify these zero fourth members to simplify our analysis rather than writing equilibrium equation for each joint. If we could remove some of the members, then our analysis is simplified significantly. So there are two conditions that zero fourth members can occur. One is two non-collinear members are connected and no external loading acts on the joint. So what is a collinear member? Is that if the two members are along the same line, that would be collinear member. So that's a collinear members but here we are saying non-collinear members so if I have a member here and a member here these two are non-collinear and if there wouldn't be any external load applied at the joints that means that these two members are zero fourth members because if I draw a free body diagram for the joint B I have these two loads acting at this joint I'm going to call them FBA and FBC. If I draw my coordinate system, X in this direction and Y in this direction, if I just simply write summation of forces in Y equals zero, I only have one component, FBC times some angle would be zero. That gives me that FBC is zero. And if I write summation of forces in X equals zero, FBC is already zero, so FBA would be zero as well. So I can find by equilibrium equation that the two non-collinear members are going to be zero. But now that we have proved that, as, as long as we see two members connected without any external load on the joint then both of them are going to be zero the other scenario is that if we have three members two of them are collinear then the third member would be a zero fourth member let's say we have a member here and then we have the third member so the third member would be a zero fourth member because again, if I draw the free body diagram of joint B, I have forces here, another force here, another force here. Let's call this FBD, call this FBC, and call this FBA. If this is my axis X and Y, then if I write summation of forces in Y equals zero, I only have FBD times an angle would be zero. So that means that FBD is zero for me. So for a three member joint, only the third member is zero. The other two are not zero. We have forces here. So now let's look at some examples. We're gonna identify zero force members in, in this truss. Uh, so looking at the truss, if you look at joint A, we have two non-collinear members and we don't have any external loads so these two are zero similar to joint d we have two non-collinear members without any external load so they're going to be zero as well so our f a f uh, is equals to f a b equals to f d and FDC. These are all zeros. 
But for other joints, joint E, I have one member, two member, three member, and all of them are gonna carry load. Member C, that is true that one of them is zero, but I have one, two, and also external load. For B, I have one, two, three, and external load that is being applied. So the reaction forces act as external loads. So I have four zero force members. The rest are ca going to carry loads. Let's look at another example. Here, at joint D, we have three member joints. The two of them are collinear, but one of them are not collinear. So that one would be zero. So this will carry no load. Similar to joint C, two of them are collinear. The third one will be zero. So for this truss, I have FAD and FAC are going to be zero. So now these two are zero. I have FAB, I have FAE, and I have external load. So they're now zero. For B, the same thing. I have FBC, FBA, and external load here. And member E also. That is true, I have two non-collinear members, but... I have an external load, so I can't say that they are zero. So the only non-zero components are listed here. Let's look at some other examples. Here, at point G, I have two non-collinear members. I have two collinear members, and also the third one would be zero. So this one would be zero. I can go here and look at D. So this one would be zero. Now that my member FD is zero, my member FZ would be zero as well. And I can't make any other uh, conclusion about other members. So force FD, force FC, and force GC are all zero. Here I have an external load and the other two here I have a load here, a load here, and I have two members here, the same thing. Here I have external load, so I can't say they are zero. So that's the only conclusion I can make. Let's look at another example here. So here I have two, a joint D, I have two collinear members. The third one, therefore, would be zero. So FDB would be zero. Uh, then here I have three members joint, but none of them are collinear. For a three member joint, I need two collinear and then one, the third one would be zero. Here joint E, I have two collinear, so third one would be zero. And I don't have any external force, so F, FB would be zero. Uh, so this one would be zero, this one would be zero. Now that these two are zero, let's look at joint B. Joint B, if I draw it here, I have one fourth here, one fourth here. They're collinear, and this is the third member, but the issue is that I have an external load here as well. So I can't say that this load is zero. And uh, I can't say anything about these two as well because I have reaction forces which act as a external load. So only two members are zero force members. And for this example, I have two collinear members, the third one is zero. Here I have two collinear, the third one would be zero, similar here and here. So F, B, G, F, G, C, F, C, F, 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 D would be zero. So I have four zero fourth members. Uh, so I could identify them by the two conditions that we talked about. If we had not identified them, that's okay. You can do the analysis and you will find that there are zero fourth members, but it's much easier to identify them first and then do the analysis for the rest of members. It will simplify our calculations significantly.